Hello everyone, in light of there being a not very wide selection of movies out in theaters right now that I'm actually able to make it out to see and review, I think it's about time we do another classic movie review because it's been a while and I've only done a couple and I want to do more. So, And this time around I'll be talking about a kind of different movie than usual that hopefully at least some of you have heard of, and that is Godfrey Reggio's 1983 experimental documentary Koyanis Gatsi. So this film came out of a years-long media campaign that Reggio and his team at the Institute for Regional Education, based in Albuquerque and funded by the ACLU, uh, was undertaking in the late 70s to educate the public about government invasions of privacy and the use of at the time rapidly developing sort of mid-century technologies to control human behavior and worldview. Rather than make straightforward PSAs talking about how all the powers that be are lizard people, these billboards and TV spots were instead experimental, usually wordless sets of images meant to simply evoke feelings in the viewer to get the campaign's point across. And it was surprisingly successful at that. As a result of it, the drug Ritalin was actually eliminated from use in several Me New Mexico uh, public school districts as a behavior-modifying drug for children after the media campaign exposed the obvious ethical problems with forcing drugs on children. Eventually, for one reason or another, the ACLU withdrew its sponsorship of the program and the Institute had just $40,000 left in the budget and needed to use it for a big, ambitious project. Enter cinematographer Ron Fricky, who had partnered with Regio on several past projects and convinced him to use the money on a experimental, theatrical feature film for the campaign, and as a result, we have Koyana Skatsi, which is actually the first in a trilogy of movies by Regio known as the Katsi Trilogy. Um, but this is the one I've seen, it's the most well-known one, and it's the one probably most worth talking about. Koyana Skatsi's title comes from a word in the Hopi language, vaguely meaning unbalanced life, although there are several similar translations uh, depending on who you ask. The movie has no dialogue or narration or title cards outside of one defining the word Koyana Skatsi. Uh, as well as some Gregorian chanting uh, of both the word Kwayana Skatsi and later some other related Hopi proverbs uh, chanted in the Hopi language as part of the film's score. It runs at just under 90 minutes. It's made up almost entirely of slowed down and time-lapsed footage of things like natural desert landscapes and waves and clouds mixed with lengthy sections showing human activity in a large city and mass production, public transit, skyscrapers, housing projects, demolitions, passers-by walking past and noticing the camera, highway traffic, satellite photography of cityscapes alongside images of microchips and circuit boards, stuff like that. Lots of abstract imagery, lots of free association kind of stuff set alongside a very powerful and repetitive minimalist musical score by the composer Philip Glass, and framed and edited in such a way to evoke feelings and stir contemplation in the viewer 
viewer about mankind and its relationship with technology and the planet and all that kind of stuff. In Regio's own words, and I think it's an important distinction for understanding what this movie is, the movie isn't about the effect of technology and industry on people but rather a statement on how everything in modern human life exists within the host of technology and industry. Our reliance on and integration of technology has touched every aspect of everyday life to the point that life before it is indistinguishable and very difficult to understand for us. I really like this movie, and I've seen it a few times, and when I first saw it was in a freshman film school course, and I didn't really know what to make of it at the time. I knew that there were sections that we had screened uh, that definitely stirred emotions in me, but I really didn't have the grasp of film language to understand why I felt that way or to what end those feelings were being brought up. And honestly, one of the best things about this movie to me is that it really isn't in the business of providing answers, but rather just, again, provoking thought, asking questions, using film language to show a constructed, definitely, but authentic vision of reality in a way that aims to realign the way we look at very everyday aspects of modern life that we take for granted as being normal boilerplate elements of existence when they are in fact very new and complex and exploitative and disruptive maybe. As far as ideas go and like theme stuff, uh, the communication of these, I think, can mainly be ascribed to Ron Fricke's cinematography and his and Alton Walpole's editing. The film uses framing as a means of reframing normal aspects of modern existence, shooting cities and apartment buildings to make them look like microchips and computer towers, and using time-lapse footage of those environments to suggest a kind of mechanical clockwork sort of feeling in watching humans carry out their normal everyday tasks. One of my absolute favorite sequences in the whole film is one called Vessels, about the various vehicles that we use to get to and from different places, which includes this laboriously long shot of a couple of commercial airliners moving around on the runway of an airport, but they're shot with a short lens, they're distorted by heat waves, and they're underscored with this airy, ethereal-sounding choir music to the point that these airplanes become massive and almost mythical-looking bodies. The kind of stuff that this film achieves is the kind that can't really be precisely explained in the way of, you know, this choice was made for this reason to get this particular point across, like you may be able to do with more traditional narrative and documentary films. Um, these choices are still deliberate and have clear intention behind them. But if you spend your whole time looking at each image in this movie and asking yourself what does this mean or what does it symbolize, then I think you may come up with some interesting answers and maybe get a feeling for what the movie is saying. But one of the reasons I love this movie so much is that it embodies a truth about movies that I think is important for people to understand. And that is that movies are, or at least can be, sort of amorphous, organic things. It doesn't always have to be as clear-cut as this image symbolizes this. 
uh, for there to be clear intent in a shot or edit choice. What I mean by that is there's something to be said for mood and feeling and using film language not always to necessarily communicate political or intellectual or philosophical ideas or points. Although in its sparse but meaningful choices, like its title and the music, as well as the context of its creation, this movie certainly does make some such points, but I think this movie also demonstrates the use of film language to just get your head in a particular space, and to use that to get you to think about something in a new way based on how you're seeing what's on screen. You know, what's surrounding it, what, you know, the music that's playing under it, the context of the things in the image that you've created in your mind from your own life experience, and how that context clashes with how it's being presented. All of this comes together to form a movie whose main goal, I think, is to present modern human life in such a way that gets you to reorient how you see it and how you think about it, and strip away all the mundane, everyday context of those things uh, as they show up in your everyday life, and consider a couple of things, like why do we do these things? What are the consequences of these things? Is this what humans were meant to do? Uh, you know, this is what human life has led up to so far. Does you know, that mean that the story of humanity is so far a positive one. Now, obviously, with a title that loosely means unbalanced life, there is a suggestion in the movie of having a negative opinion on modern human life, but I don't think this movie is so simple that its entire message is just technology bad, or, you know, going to work on the subway every day makes you stupid and you should stop, because I don't think that's what it's saying. I think the film wants us to come away having looked more critically at how modernity has affected the human experience, and as well as the planet. Not just from an ecological standpoint, although that's important, but from like an aesthetic and temporal one. The film takes the time at some scenes to stop and look at the human faces and bodies in close-up or mid-close-up to give a human context to all the mechanical looking bustle of life that we see for the rest of the film to remind us that there are entire minds and lived experiences in each and every one of the little dots that you see zipping around New York City for the rest of the movie. I don't think it's a coincidence how much of the film's sections that focus on stuff like driving and mass transit and city life and commerce and mass production are all presented, almost all presented, in fast-moving time-lapse footage. Uh, emphasizing the rapidity of life under modern global capitalism and corporatism, uh, and sort of showing how the post-industrial sort of work week and approach to life and approach to time as a resource that can be wasted um, or used properly uh, has altered our perception of time and the way that we approach using it. When the film speeds up and when it slows down, and also when the frame is very cluttered and messy versus when it's very structured with just a few major shapes, are very deliberate choices and they work to communicate something not about whether life in the modern day is good or bad necessarily, but just about what it's like, just the nature of it. Now I could probably find a thousand examples in the movie of specific shots or sequences that I think illustrate my point, but I think you get the picture, and I'd like to leave some of this movie for you to kind of unpack for yourself and, you know, what you think it's saying. I like this movie because it 
very purely uses film language, what you see and what you hear in the frame, to put you in a sort of out-of-body headspace and get you to think about some of the things you take for granted in this, like, breathlessly paced modern life. And I don't think the movie exists to shame people for participating in this life, but rather to suggest that maybe the easiest and the fastest and the most abundant life isn't exactly the best for the human mind or the human spirit. After all, Koyaanisqatsi doesn't translate most closely to, like, wrong life or sinful life, but unbalanced life. And I mean, the most straightforward instance of the movie taking a negative stance on this kind of life is in the Hopi proverbs chanted at the end of the movie, which includes sayings like, if we dig precious things from the land, we will invite disaster. Which is, you know, kind of on the nose, but for one thing, it's not an untrue assessment of the situation we're currently in as a society, and for another thing, the film's language throughout the rest of its runtime complicates and unpacks that statement in a far less straightforward and prophetic sounding way. And the best part is, even if you don't care at all to engage this movie philosophically or intellectually with what it's saying, I think that the reason this movie was able to gain the cult following that it has is because in terms of the roster of raw emotions that it elicits, it kind of makes for strangely good, accessible entertainment, albeit entertainment like boiled down to its most elemental and sensory nature. There are slow and somber parts, there are fast moving and genuinely exciting parts, there are weird, abstract, wacky parts, there's even some funny stuff, and the cool thing is that it's not so much even the content of the film that's doing that work, but the form. In film, we call this being a tone poem. It's, you know, using film language to sort of weave you through a, an array of emotions. And that's what's fun about this movie, just letting the images and sounds take you on what can be a very physical, sensory journey. Uh, is in itself a mode of appreciating this film without even beginning to deal with any of its philosophy. So to sort of wrap up uh, and uh, summarize my thoughts on Koyana Scotsi, I think it's a wonderful marrying of images and sounds and a great use of film language to not only communicate intellectual ideas about modernity and technology, but also a uh, sensory roller coaster of sorts that allows the viewer to augment their perspective of the world around them and maybe contemplate some of the background elements of day-to-day -day existence, not just their practical positive and negative effects on other people and the world, although that's important, but even more basic stuff like that. You know, what do they look like? What do they make us think of? Why is it, you know, that seeing an airplane every day of your life in the sky makes you feel nothing, but watching one slowly move toward you with, like, warpy heat waves and choir music uh, makes it feel like a giant weird, otherworldly monolith. You know, what does this change in perspective say about the place of these objects and places and artifacts and elements in our lives and what they mean to us? And that's the cool thing about this movie and movies that use film language the way this movie does is that it's not just about in that moment feeling something different about something familiar based on the way that it's presented. It's about using the way it's presented to see another truth about that thing. And I just love when movies sort of break filmmaking down to its core elements and exploit them to give you a unique and pure emotional experience. And I think it shows how powerful film is as a medium, that we don't even necessarily need 
plots or characters or an outwardly expressed message to feel those emotions and to be made to think about something differently or to interpret a message for ourselves, that we can get all of that information just through the images and the sounds and how they're arranged. Film is a very uniquely effective and complicated tool for human communication. It's part of why I love it so much and why I think it's so interesting. Uh, and I love seeing it utilized to its full potential. And that is why I highly recommend Kwayana Scotsi. I'm not gonna give this a rating, uh, just because I know I gave ratings in my last couple classic reviews, but the reason for these videos is different than my normal movie reviews. Those are like actual evaluations, like I just saw a movie once that is new and I'm giving my opinion on it and I'm trying to like numerically boil down my opinion just as a means of capping things off, but I mean... If I make a classic review of these movies, I usually think they're good, um, and I am not going back to them to like reevaluate them, but I pick these movies because I think they say something, they speak to something interesting about film that I want to talk about, uh, and it's uh, there's something about the movie that I think is special that I want to share my thoughts on. That's kind of why I do these, and why I want to keep making them, so I think slapping an arbitrary number on the end of that is just kind of pointless. But anyway, that is my classic review of Koyana Scotsi. I hope it has piqued your interest, and you want to go check this movie out, and other movies like it. There are... Ron Fricke himself directed some very similar movies, like Baraka and Samsara, which are good. I don't think they're quite as great as Koyana Scotsi, but same general kind of approach and, uh, you know, type of movie, I suppose. Just hope it got you thinking a little bit about what movies are and stuff like that. That's what I want to try to do with this channel, is you know, get you to think about stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it there. I will see you next time for uh, more SpongeBob and movie reviews and uh, all the other great stuff that I do on the internet. So I'll see you next time. <laughs>